سبحان الله سبحان الله حمدا لله حمدا لله ولا إله إلا الله ولا إله إلا الله والله أكبر والله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome to Al Hikma TV. My name is Naima Khan Ghani and I'll be your host for today's segment of Who's Who in America and the Community. This segment brings to you individuals who have dedicated and committed their lives to serving Allah. They come from the local, national and international levels of the community. We hope that their story will serve as an inspiration for you to get involved and make a difference in the community. Today my guests are uh, Dr. Muhammad Hassan, who is the director of the outreach at ICNA Relief USA, and also Brother Abdul Rauf Khan, who is the director of hunger prevention, also of ICNA Relief USA. Welcome to the program, brothers. Exactly. It is certainly is a pleasure to have both of you, because I know ICNA Relief is involved in quite a number of projects. Before we delve into some of those things, uh, Dr. Hassan, why don't you give us a little bit about your background, where you're from, so that our viewers can get to know you as an individual. Alhamdulillah, hamdulillah, abadi hidda kareen, isha kareen, wa usulli wa usallim ala khair al-mursaleen. Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik ala sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahabihi wa tabi'in wa tabi'in wa tabi'in ila yawmi al-deen. First, I would like to thank you and say jazakum Allah khairan for giving us this opportunity. Alhamdulillah, I have, I was born and raised in Cairo, Egypt. I moved to the United States about uh, 21 years ago and uh, I, uh, when I moved here I started to work for corporate America for a number of years. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created each one of us with certain bounties, certain blessings and it is up to us how can we share these uh, blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with uh, our community and uh, try to enhance our brotherhood in the United States. So Alhamdulillah, I started my studies here. But I studied, uh, I had uh, an MBA. Then uh, Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala opened my heart to, to switch all my career, all my future to uh, serve uh, the Muslim community in the United States. This is where I uh, went for further education and uh, I started to work for Muslim organizations. This is where I end up working with, in, uh, with ICNA Relief right now. And your PhD is currently in, in uh, Islamic, Islamic studies. studies. And you receive that right. here in the yes, United here States? Yes, the United States. Oh, yes. mashallah. So what motivated you to switch to make such a, I wouldn't say drastic change, but such a change? Uh, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Uh, it's, you know, uh, when you work for, you work for your life, of course, because you want to sustain your family, you want to sustain yourself. Mm -hmm. And, uh, of course, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put goodness in our hearts. And it's up to each one of us how we're going to increase this goodness. Is it just you want to have this goodness limited to yourself, your family, or you want to extend your hand to share it with the Muslim community? So, alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you started by doing volunteer work. Then you feel like volunteer work, no, you need to increase. It's not enough. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Then you increase the hours that you are volunteering. Then you feel like, no, you need to have some more knowledge also. Then you feel like, no, actually Islamic work needs more and more. This is where I decided to dedicate all my life, all my time for Islamic work. SubhanAllah, what a, you know, really motivating story for a lot of uh, viewers out there to get involved in you know, you're correct when you said that's how it started, by volunteering. Exactly. And you get, you know, the bug bites you and you just want more and more. And then, inshallah, you know, eventually it sort of takes over the yes. whole person. Inshallah. Very good, mashallah. Um, Brother Abdullah Rauf, give us a little bit of history about you. I know you're currently living in Florida, South Florida. Yeah. Um, history from, I, Bismillah rahman rahim My name is Abdullah Rauf. Um, I came to U.S. in 95. Um, then since I work with... Um, Originally from? I am from Pakistan. Pakistan. Okay. And um, I, I've been in Texas for at least 10 years and uh, worked there. I've been with Igna since I came to this country. I think as, as a teaching of Quran and my parents, I was, whatever I do for good, it comes from my parents. Because they taught me um, the values of deen and values of living in this world. If you don't serve the humanity, you're not living your life right. So I would say my parents uh, spent a lot of time 
a lot of effort put me uh, put into me and uh, make me who I am and I uh, whatever the, whatever I'm doing has come from come from Allah is, and second they my parents they put a lot of effort on me and uh, that's uh, I'm applying the same thing to my children as well them using them and you know uh, taking where, everywhere I go with them so, alhamdulillah it is um, learning from my parents and teaching to my children as well as of my background, I work with uh, in Texas. I work in Texas Instruments, mm -hmm. and I work for Fidelity Investment. And then I end up working with for the Walgreen Pharmacy for ten years. Now I'm working for uh, the Ikna Relief Director of South Florida. Not just South Florida. I work for the whole region, from all the way from Florida, Georgia, North Carolina, South Carolina, Alabama, the five states is the South region. Uh, it's my responsibility to uh, community development, and I go start. Uh, the services where those people, those who need, uh, work with the massages, work with the Islamic organizations, work with those who are in need. And uh, my, um, the, I don't have any specialty, but I would say I like to work with youth. Because mm -hmm. um, uh, I think if, if our youth have a right direction, they can take this place uh, better than we are. Definitely, because they are the leaders exactly. of the future. You know, they, they are the future. Alhamdulillah, yeah. they have a lot of potential and they have a lot of courage and they have mm -hmm. uh, a lot of energy as well. And they, if we if we uh, use and tap their in the potential in a proper way, they can took and they can take us all the way up to where we want it to go, inshallah. And alhamdulillah, they're doing it very well. And uh, some of you, they're not uh, up to the tars yet, but it's not their fault. It's our fault. We're not tapping in in, in a proper way. Inshallah, we, uh, as we can go along, and um, uh, if we if we put our uh, project in a proper way, and uh, Alhamdulillah, a lot of our project and youth are involved very deeply. Our feed the hungry events and other like that, and all the youth are involved. Alhamdulillah. So tell me the difference between Ikna and Ikna Relief, because you mentioned earlier that you were, you got involved initially with Ikna. Yes. So what is the difference between Ikna and Ikna Relief? USA? Uh, Islamic Circle of North America I started in 1969. And um, since the ICNA is an uh, umbrella organization, and mm -hmm. that uh, that provide uh, uh, dawa services and, and uh, uh, other other services as well, and ICNA relief is only domestic uh, relief, and that uh, domestic relief provide um, uh, all the relief work, social services, and um, the, those who need it socially in America. We we collect money in the U.S. and we spend money in the U.S. We don't collect money from anywhere outside the U.S. and we don't send anything outside the U.S. So everything is internal within it, the United everything States. Everything is domestically. We don't it doesn't do go out or come from outside. Mm, yes. We have a partner organization called Helping Hand, which mm -hmm. is do everything outside the U.S., which ICNA Relief does. They can leave everything uh, on, uh, do it only the domestic control. So just for clarification purposes, do you have these um, services available to Muslims as well as non-Muslims? Definitely. We don't discriminate. We have women's shelters, we have Feed the Hungry events. And when we go, it's open for, when you do any kind of social service, it's open for everyone. And uh, in our women's shelters, uh, alhamdulillah, a lot of non-Muslim came, sisters, they came. And um, I think out of them, three of them become Muslims, living with uh, Muslim Inshallah. shelters. And, um, that's a, a lot of good story, inshallah, we'll talk about it more. And uh, especially those who we have uh, Feed the Hungry events in uh, South Florida, um, in not South Florida, all over the U.S. Mm -hmm. We have uh, 15 uh, field offices in Ikna Relief, and that we provide uh, uh, feed the, feed, Go Feed the Hungry, and that uh, we go to downtown, uh, downtown projects, and we especially we have uh, trying to utilize our youth to go to senior citizen houses those who cannot get out the house very often. We have team of youth, They're like four sisters and four brothers go to houses and brother go out inside the house and the sister goes inside the house and clean up the house and you know, talk to them and give them some comfort. And the brothers, those, you know, the, uh, like, mashallah, they have all the equipment. They go out, cut the yard and clean up the house for them. And those citizens, those, you know, we, uh, we see them on, on the TV and other places. Uh, we they become our spokesperson and they whenever something happened and you know unfortunate thing happen all, all the time instead of me calling radio talking to tv and they are the one who they, you know, they talk about us and they, they say what well, ikna and not ikna just say as a muslim perspective you know what i don't know which muslim you're talking about 
that the Muslim, those who come to my house, they do this and this and that. So we get uh, some positive PR from the community. Especially, you know, the, the senior citizens, those who really need mm -hmm. help, and uh, we are kind of neglecting them. So we're trying to tap on those uh, senior citizens. It's connecting very well with our youth. Because our youth is um, kind of kind of going away from the uh, our senior citizen as well. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to attach that services to the, our youth going to senior citizen houses. And they get a lot of uh, good information from this, the people, those who are in the same home. Alhamdulillah, they have experience of life. They can teach them very valuable lessons from the sitting there and talking to them. That's good. And I'm glad you're mentioning the senior citizen sector of the community because usually they tend to be the forgotten ones, exactly. you know, because you're getting old now. Okay, you have no use to the community or us anymore, so you would set you aside. So I'm glad that you're developing that bond for the younger generation to mesh with the older ones and make them feel, hey, you still have a purpose. Alhamdulillah, yeah, they, so we, we Allah, send to saying, hey, okay, you all got old, you know, yes. you, you got put in the corners, and no, no, Alhamdulillah, they spend their life, and mm -hmm. they know the information which we have to learn. We don't have to invent the wheel, they already know, they've been through it, you know, they've and been they in And they can share their experiences And when we spend generation. time with them, they taught a lot of good things, and which, can we cannot, we yes. can, which we cannot learn from the books. Yeah, they do have a wealth of resources and information that you're just willing to share. So that's great, I'm glad that, you know, you're able to make that connection, mashallah. Uh, Dr. Hassan, tell us a little bit about what goes on in Dallas in terms of the projects. Because we're here in South Florida and sometimes we tend to be a little bit um, nonchalant and, you know, stay in the background. And we have all these other states and other places so much more vibrant and active than we are, unfortunately. Give us some of the things that you're currently involved in in Dallas. Oh, uh, actually, I am overseeing the United States in terms of outreach. Okay. Uh, my job is just to travel all over the country, uh, meet with the Muslim communities, uh, trying to create awareness about our organization. Because uh, our organization, actually, for a long period of time, we were doing uh, our work. Uh, we don't want to say secretly, but un un you can say that in, in a quiet level. Because so in the background kind of thing, yes, yeah, doing exactly. the work but quietly. Be because yeah. we know that our intention is just to please Allah subhanahu mm -hmm. wa ta'ala. But uh, as the organization started to grow and the organization felt that more programs need to be implemented to serve the Muslim community and as an obligation, uh, as our deen, uh, our religion is instructing us and also we want to extend our hand to non-Muslim as a way of da'wah. Uh, so the organization started to feel that we need to create awareness because we need the du'a of every Muslim in the country. We need their volunteer work, we need their support and uh, the only way we can do that is to start it to uh, convey the message that there is an organization working inside the mm -hmm. United States. And to be honest with you is uh, many people they did not feel that anyone would need help in the United States. But when we started to work, we found out, like, uh, for example, we have so far five shelter houses for our sisters. No one will ever think that in the United States our sisters need a place to stay. Right. Our Muslim sisters. Yes. Yeah, our, our, yani, ask any imam in the United States how many times we have, like, a pious sister, a well-known good sister in the community who was left to sleep in her car. Mm -hmm. So at least, alhamdulillah, this is not going to happen. It's true. These stories don't get out there. and There's some things that people don't actually talk about. So we e say, hey, we don't have that problem in our community. E that doesn't affect us. E exactly. Exactly. And uh, Feed the Hungry program, mm -hmm. for example, and the disaster relief that the organization do. Uh, when we go and help Mus uh, Muslims and non-Muslims, non-Muslims actually, when, when you extend the, your hands to them and help them out, they appreciate that. Now, Sometimes more than the Muslims, uh, unfortunately. Definitely. Yes. Definitely. <laughs> so it is a way of dawah. Mashallah. And we believe that when, when you actually deal with the non-Muslims, it's better than you stay all day long talking to them to about them. what Islam is mm -hmm. all about. This is one thing. And uh, our youth, of course, our youth, most of our volunteers is our youth. And we, we need to involve the youth because we know for a fact that we, one day or another we're going to pass away. And uh, our, the future of Islam in this land is depending on our new generation, which is our kids. Yes. Because also that uh, uh, the, the challenge that we go through is not, because most of us, 
immigrants, our generation of immigrants, we came to the United States, we work mm -hmm. hard, we, we have to go through a lot of adaptation, but uh, the challenge is how is my son or my daughter going to raise up their son or their daughter? This is the real challenge that we are facing. So besides that we are teaching them our deen, our Quran, our, uh, the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we are passing to them the importance of brotherhood and sisterhood. We are passing to them the importance of humanity, like uh, the, the famous hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he said that I have seen a man traveling in paradise. All what he did, he trimmed a branch of a tree who was hurting Muslims. So how do you think of when you feed this Muslim, when you protect him, when you shelter her, what kind of reward are you going to get? So we need, what we are trying to do with our youth is we passing to them that our religion, our deen is not only in the masjid, it's not only by reading Quran or it's not only by performing the all acts of worship, no, by extending, also by extending our hands to our brothers and sisters who are in need. And also Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned in another authentic hadith that if for you to go and extend your hand to brother and sister that they are in need, more beloved to him than staying the entire month doing i'tikaf in the Masjid al Nabawi. So when you seclude yourself in the Salah, uh, uh, even in the Masjid al Nabawi, which uh, uh, yani we can imagine what kind of reward you can get when you just stay in the Masjid 24 hours, mm -hmm. doing uh, Salah, uh, reading Quran, re uh, making Dua. When you leave all of that and you go help someone, uh, a brother or sister that they are in need, more beloved to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You mentioned quite a few points there for us and, and you know it seems as the focus is on the youth and passing it on you're sort of passing on the torch so to speak and we're trying to teach our youth that um, it's go beyond the rituals go beyond the exactly. basics of Islam exactly. and get a little exactly. bit deep because Islam is real it's a way of life it's not just a religion exactly. you know you need to follow and get away because a lot of times I think our youth especially they think it's just the rituals if I pray five times a day I fast I perform a Hajj I just you know do what is required of me that's enough but it's not it's required, but it's just the basics, and you need to go beyond that. And that's a valuable lesson. It's really actually a priceless lesson that you're teaching these kids. And I'm really proud, mashallah, that Ikna Relief is doing this, not just doing the work, but they're also educating the youth that this is what they need to go out and do that. So mashallah, we need to take a break at this point. Please stay tuned. We'll be right back. I should have told you. Assalamu alaikum wa Welcome to Toyota of Hollywood. No matter what your new car needs are, it's our goal to make every step of your ownership experience as easy as possible. Let our professional trained sales staff help you find the right car at the right price. Discover an easy ownership experience at Toyota of Hollywood today. We're conveniently located at 1841 North 60th Avenue in Hollywood, Florida. Eat healthy, eat halal at Ashraf's Halal Meat Center for all your East and West Indian grocery for genuine Halal USDA meat. Stop in or call in your orders at 305-654-0195. That's 305-654-0195. Are you tired of calling cards? Are you fed up of those long PIN numbers? Then use Sensible, international direct calling for cents only. For more details, contact the Al Hikmat office at 954 986 0158. That's 954 986 0158. SNA Caribbean Market, East and West Indian Grocery for all your halal meats, fish, and vegetables. Call to place your order at 954 961 6160. That's 954 961 6160. If you would like to advertise your business on Al Hikmah TV online 24 7, Al Hikmah website, and Al Hikmah monthly Muslim magazine, please contact the Al Hikmah office at 954 986 0158. That's 954 986 0158. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. Tune in to Who's Who in America and in your community. Hosted by Sister Naima Khan Ghani with extraordinary guests every Sunday night at 8.30 p.m. on www.alhikmatlive.com.
Tune in for Friday Khutbah at 1.30 p.m. Broadcasting live from Darul Uloom Institute, Pembroke Pines, Florida on Al Hikma TV Online. Jashne Amade Rasul Allahi Allah Tuning to Young Muslim Talent in America Hosted by Salma Muhammad With talented kids from all over America Every Saturday night at 8.30pm on www.alhikmatlive.com Allahi Allah Jashne Amade Rasul Allahi Allah Thinking of doing Sadaqa Jaria for your near and dear ones? We recommend you to sponsor The Origin of True Islam brochure, The Genealogy of Prophets, or the Surahs and Zikr to be recited daily as Sadaqa Jaria for your parents who have passed away. Or you could sponsor one of the items for yourself, Fi Sabilillah. For more details, contact the Al Hikmat office at 1 800 804 0267. Or 954-986-0158 or email us at alhikmat at alhikmat.com Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakat. Welcome back to Who's Who in America and the Community. If you're now joining us today, my guests are Dr. Muhammad Hassan and Brother Rauf Khan, uh, both from ICNA Relief. Dr. Hassan, give us a little bit of insight into the goals and objectives of ICNA Relief. Bismillah uh, Rasulullah. The first goal that uh, this organization is looking for actually is to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if we all remember the first story in Islam, that when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came back from the cave and he was shivering, and uh, Sayyida Khadija radiallahu anha, she told him very uh, profound statement. She said, Wallahi, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will never uh, let you down, simply because uh, she mentioned more than one thing, more than one reason, but uh, all of them, they are talking about that because he never let Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he never let the weak and the needy down. So we, we capture on that and that's what we are trying to do to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first in our uh, work. Second thing is to enhance the spirit of uh, brotherhood in the United States because uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us you know, the example of a believer to a believer is like wall with bricks. Each brick will provide support and stability to the other bricks. So this is the bond that we need to see among ourselves. It's not because our deen is not just by building masajid everywhere. We need to have a masjid inside the heart of every believer. So this is, uh, we can consider that as a second goal or second objective. And uh, the third thing is, uh, Imam, as uh, Imam al-Ghazali, rahimahullah, uh, said that the da'wah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam started long before the revelation. The da'wah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam started with husn al-khuluq, with good character. Mm -hmm. He was beloved there. People loved his presence. So, and that set the foundation for da'wah over there. That's what we are trying to do also. We are trying to show people uh, who are Muslims, what Muslims can do. And Muslims uh, would love all the time to extend their hands to help the needy and to help the weak, regardless of what is your religion or what is your race or your color. That's the uh, third uh, objective that we are trying to accomplish in the United States, inshallah. These really are profound goals, mashallah. And I like the first one, and, and I really need to re-emphasize on it again. Our goal is to please Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, a lot of people tend to lose focus, and they get so caught up in the dunya, they get caught up in the power and the ego, that they tend to forget that our goal, all of us, each and every one of us, inshallah, our goal is to, to please Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I'm very, I'm very impressed, mashallah. They are profound. And, you know, we pray that Allah helps the organization and helps all of us to make sure that these goals are promoted, uh, inshallah. Uh, um, Brother Raouf, give us, give us a little bit of some of the, I know you mentioned some of them already, but tell us a little bit more of some of the other activities ICNA Relief is involved in. 
Uh, <coughs> first thing is, uh, I'm the director of Feeding the Hungry, so I will start with Feeding the Hungry. Okay. Uh, Feed, the, uh, Feed the Hungry event we do in 15 places in the U.S. Uh, last year, alhamdulillah, we provide services for, for the people, those who need it. Uh, about 70,000 people got fed from McNerly Venner. And uh, that we include, um, uh, we go to downtown, so we go to senior citizen houses, and we we provide those who need uh, as much we uh, we can provide from ourselves. So let me just ask you before you move on, do you team up with other organizations to do this? How do you identify where to go and who are you going to serve? Um, as of right now, you're going to leave work in uh, different uh, cities and uh, most of them we work in ourselves and we are trying to partnering with um, the other organizations, especially in South Florida we work, um, uh, have a conversation with Friends of Humanity and uh, work, work with FIA and uh, all the massages, alhamdulillah, mm -hmm. we are very, uh, very welcoming. Uh, every time I go at any event, they welcome us and they anything we need, they always uh, open heart and open hand for us to come and provide any services. And whatever any, any organization needs from us, I'm, alhamdulillah, I try my very best to be there and I'm, I'm always there to help them from my side. So do you identify or assist you in identifying a community or a particular um, maybe group of people that need help? I know you you also assist with Project Downtown. It's right. very we, popular here. We in South work, Florida. yes. South, South Florida and all of the places mm -hmm. Project Downtown is working very well and we work with Project Downtown as well. We go to Fort Lauderdale and mm -hmm. we go to Miami uh, Downtown. And uh, uh, other, other places we go, specifically my intention is to, to work with senior citizen houses. Those most of the time get really neglected. So we go find those who are really needed because they can't get out of the house very often. So we go uh, find those communities like senior citizen, uh, citizen, citizen houses and we go talk to them. They're those who need help and we provide services with them. Right. So do you organize things as food drives and have like a food bank maybe in, these, in the Masajid or in the community, in the cities? that assist the community and say, hey, you know, the Muslim sector, we're donating this to your food bank. It's to give out to the people. I'm, you glad, I'm, I'm glad you asked. I forgot about that. We have a, a 14 food pantries mm -hmm. in the U.S. And the food pantry, what we do, we bring the, we have uh, barrels in the massage. People put the stuff in, in the barrels and every week I pick them up and put in our, barrel, in our uh, food pantries. And after, uh, um, it's food pantries for non-Muslims and Muslims for as everyone. well. So is it Whoever, where, where they're located? Because yeah. I know if you think, people think they're located in the masajid, right. they tend to think, oh, that's only for the Muslims. So No, that we have an office here in Boca Raton, uh -huh. and that's where food pantry is located. Okay. We have a thrift shop as well in the office, and we have one woman's shelter in uh, Palm Beach, and that uh, woman's shelter we, uh, we just opened in, in two months ago. So we're working on open food pantry over there as well. And, uh, and the trip shop is going to be part of the shelter, inshallah. Any ideas and plans of bringing that to South Florida? Because we need to have, definitely, we need this to have that South set up here. Yeah. You <laughs> know, that's a little closer down home where we are. We, inshallah, working uh, as uh, working with the Masajid. Inshallah, mm -hmm. we, uh, we're trying to provide uh, food pantry to the Masajid as well and ask them to open it for the people, those who need uh, non-Muslims and Muslim can come to Masjid and get the food. Guess is the best way of doing Dawah, providing food for them, providing uh, a a any necessary f uh, item those who need, we can inshallah provide them from our part. And uh, Alhamdulillah, when you open uh, stuff like that, and uh, all the Muslim community always pitch in and always help bring food, and non-perishable food items, always help. And it goes a long ways. And Ramadan is a good time to tap into that emotion of our community because they tend to give so much more, especially when it comes to the food, with the right. whole concept of fasting. We do a lot of food drives here. Right. So it, I think it's a really good idea that you guys are establishing to get maybe even the food pantries or the food banks set up maybe in each masjid so we can help the Muslims and let even the non-Muslims know, hey, you can come here and, you know, you can get help. Um, I contact all the massages. Mm -hmm. uh, I won't say all the massages. Most of the massages, mashallah, a lot of them here. Um, right. They have. Uh, I ask them to give them, give me at least five families, so we can provide food the whole the week of food every week. Alhamdulillah, they specify those five families to me, and Alhamdulillah, we are providing those Mashallah. services to. Ev Very not good. we cannot do everything. What yes. we what we are uh, uh, limited resources mm -hmm. we have. We are providing. Every masjid, they give us a five family, those who need it. A lot of uh, people, those who attempt to go to masjid very often to get services. And I, they, instead of masjid providing services, I ask them to, you know, you know towards Fekna Ali. Fekna Ali can provide services for them. Alhamdulillah, it's been very successful. And, you know, sometimes it's good. And sometimes you, you have to find the ways to do things in, in different ways. 
And um, I just want to mention one more thing about the disaster relief. Alhamdulillah, disaster relief is um, a very um, profound thing, I guess. A disaster happened, which we cannot or whoever, nobody can stop That's it. Right. But as a Muslim, we should be there as, um, uh, as a response to this disaster. Alhamdulillah, uh, I was just want to mention it very openly. It says our uh, youth from South Florida went from here all the way to Nashville when Nashville flood happened. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, in Birmingham, uh, Alabama, uh, and uh, Joplin, is the tornado hit. Alhamdulillah, a lot of youth from here in Texas and other places went. We went up there and did all the services those who needed from our, our Alhamdulillah, youth are very active, uh, not just in South Florida, everywhere else, and we have to use it in a proper way. I know as time is uh, coming along, I can just quickly mention all the services. We have uh, family services, which uh, we have, Alhamdulillah, five full-time uh, uh, counselors, those who are counseling, uh, youth counseling, family counseling before and after That's marriage. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, they are full-time uh, Ikna Leaf employees. And uh, one more thing I always want to mention on this is Ikna Leaf is 99% uh, is all volunteers work with them. And only certain people, those who have to have, you know, the office work. Overhead expenses, do, yes. This all, we have mm -hmm. only 8% of uh, overheads. So it's not, you know, there's much... Uh, or oh, we people talk about it. We just want to say this: the 99 percent is all volunteers, and only 8 percent is just uh, overhead. Those who are really needed because the office has to be run for certain people, and um, we have a crisis hotline with uh, those youth or family, those who need help. And we do, and, and locally they don't want to go to, to the imam. They don't want to people because if I have a problem, I don't want to go to my imam because he knows me personally. We uh, we open a, a crisis hotline. If they eight hundred number, you can call that number, and that number will connect to the to our counselor. And they can help them from the phone, and if they need it, they can fly in, and we can sit down and talk about the, sure. the counseling thing. We have, alhamdulillah, at least for four uh, free clinics, mm -hmm. in, uh, one in Atlanta, one in Houston, and one in Melbourne. Uh, we are still working in uh, other free clinics. Those people come in and get all the free uh, medical need, uh, needed uh, services. And uh, one uh, biggest thing I would say, we have uh, refugee services. And those uh, people from Iraq and uh, um, uh, uh, mostly Iraq uh, as of right now, in Haiti, when Haiti hit, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of refugees came. When Ignar leave work, we don't discriminate Muslim and non-Muslim, those who need help, we help them. just go there and help whatever we can do. Um, the refugee services are very, uh, very needed in this, uh, especially Muslim community is not very uh, at, uh, up to it which uh, we really have to t uh, step up and do it. And alhamdulillah, a uh, uh, lot of Muslim community wanted to do help, but they don't know how to do it. So that's why um, uh, um, we wanted to, uh, we have a partnership with uh, Red Cross, and we, um, we work with uh, uh, FEMA as well. Um, um, our, I, we go all the meetings and all the, I'm of, uh, the, what you call it, the wide uh, certified and CERT certified as well. Uh, any any uh, disaster happen, God forbid, not happen in South right. Florida. I think that's the reason they moved they here. They contact you, you respond. And they, I yes. I made the contract with like at least five massages, massages in South Florida, and uh, that massage, God forbid, any uh, any disaster happen, then Red Cross and FEMA can call me and I provide, I talk to the massage board, and they already mm -hmm. agreed to it. We already signed the MOUs and stuff, and they they use their facility for Muslim or non-Muslim for people to come to stay in a, in a masjid as a shelter. Mm -hmm. It's not the, not the shelter just for Muslim, the shelter for, for people. everyone. And it's open community. for everyone. Exactly. And that's the best way of doing that. Work. Our massage in is huge. Mm -hmm. And we have to utilize our, our building. And it's underutilized right now. I think exactly. most of it. We use really it, the whole building we use yeah. only on Fridays. That's right. And we have to use our building because we have to use our name as a Muslim for humanity, and Muslim for friendship. It, this name is not there yet. We have to use it because we do a lot of good things, but we don't talk about it, we don't promote our good things. And uh, last thing we talk about, uh, what you want to mention is back to school. We started a couple years ago, and uh, I think this is inshallah this time in South Florida, we're trying to introduce here. Back to school is the people, the, those who family that cannot afford to see, you know, the backpack and school supplies and uniforms and stuff like that. We provide all the services for them so they can, you know, uh, they don't have to have burden to send the kids to the school. And uh, it, for them, we don't specify Muslim families as well in so social services the for everyone. Right. Those who wanted to come help, and Alhamdulillah, we provide any kind of help for them. So this service, inshallah, should be uh, inshallah we work in uh, to establish this this year. And before Ramadan, inshallah, is going to kick in, and uh, uh, inshallah, Ramadan is going to promote it very well. And uh, we working with different organization here and uh, locally. 
and all the massages is uh, on board and they were they wanted to help because this is a, a thing we all everybody wants to to support inshallah I mean, there are so many things that you're talking about with ICNA Relief and the services that they provide. I definitely have to invite both of you back again to our program because we definitely cannot cover it just in one show. It's been really a pleasure having both of you, but we need to wrap up this point. Dr. Hassan, is there any last parting advice and words that you'd like to share with the audience, maybe encourage our community? How can our audience get involved and assist uh, ICNA Relief? Uh, inshallah, if they can just uh, visit our website, our website is uh, iknarelief.org. Uh, it will uh, let them know more about the organization and all the projects that we are implementing in the United States. And we need their dua, their support, and uh, that's about it, inshallah. And definitely, inshallah, we will you know, work with you to make sure that that is accomplished and inshallah. the goals and objectives do materialize, inshallah. It's really been a pleasure, gentlemen, having both of you on the program, and we definitely will invite you to come again. Jazakallah khair. Thank you so much for being my guest today. Jazakallah khair. I just want to mention one more thing. Jazakallah khair for al hikmat to inviting us here and having time to talk about what we have. Inshallah, we can do a lot of good things together. Wa'iyakum, you're more than welcome. And that brings us to the end of our program for today. You've been viewing Who's Who in America and the Community. Please join us again for another segment of Who's Who in America and the Community, where you get to meet ordinary people doing extraordinary things. And before we go, just remember the numbers in the website will be posted at the end of the program. So if you are interested and you want to get involved, please take note and do contact. Make that phone call. All it takes is one call and one person to make a great difference. So until then, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Subhanallah, Subhanallah, Hamdalillah, Hamdalillah, Walla ilaha illallah, Walla ilaha illallah, Wallahu akbar, Wallahu akbar, Subhanallah, Subhanallah, Hamdalillah, Hamdalillah, Walla ilaha illallah, Walla ilaha illallah, Wallahu akbar, Wallahu akbar,